This is not even my final form. Welcome to this Swain Ultimate Guide for Season 13. This guide contains everything you need, tips and tricks for each ability, combos, power spikes, and even gameplay examples to achieve your goal this season with Swain. Whether you're a newer player aiming to get out of Iron Fall or grinding to get Diamond for the first time. After testing items and runes from the best pro and solo queue players, I've put as much info in this guide to help you emulate their builds and gameplay. I'm Zeus, let's get straight into this guide and I'll show you how to dominate with the visionary ruler of Noxus, Swain. Let's quickly cover his abilities, then after each one, I'll show you tips and tricks you can use right now in your next game to gain an advantage. His passive, Ravenous Flock, leaves behind soul fragments after enemy champions have died. Your ravens will automatically pick up nearby souls. These souls will heal you for around 5-9% to maximum HP and grant you 12 HP permanently. These souls will make Swain naturally tanky throughout the game, making him a pretty good scaling champion. We'll be able to pick up more souls from his W and E abilities, which I'll cover soon. His Q, Death's Hand, unleashes 5 bolts in front of him, dealing AoE damage to all enemies. What's cool about this ability is the potential to hit a single champion with multiple bolts. Get up close to deal optimal damage, kind of like a mini shotgun. It will be your main tool to wave clear with the amazing AoE, low cooldown and decent mana cost, as well as to poke melee champs. His W, Vision of Empire, summons a demonic eye. It will grant vision of the area for 2 seconds and then explode after 1.5 seconds, dealing magic damage to all enemies and slowing them for 2.5 seconds. Each champion hit will be then revealed for 4 to 8 seconds and you'll collect a soul fragment from every champion hit. This is one of the longest range abilities in the game. Be on the lookout to assist your teammates or even snipe low HP enemies from across the map. This ability alone is quite hard to land as most players can simply walk out of it, so try to time it during specific events. Use it to block fleeing enemies' paths. They'll either have to walk backwards into your team or run through it causing them to take damage and be slowed. Aim for areas that are tight and narrow, especially in the jungle and river, or even between towers and walls. When enemies are using abilities that have charge up or long cast times, like Zerath's Q or Cyan's Q, they'll either have to rush their abilities or risk taking the hit from W. If enemies are already CC'd, you'll have a much easier time landing this. Make a quick mental list of your ally CC abilities when your game starts so you're ready to follow up while enemies are recalling. This one's great because even if you don't hit them, they'll still have to walk out of range and therefore cancel their recall. This could be game changing during the early lane phase. The vision is amazing to check for objectives like Dragon and Baron. Even catch out the enemy jungler taking buffs, helping your team reveal their location, and you might even get some free gold and a buff. Think of it as a free farsight alteration, the blue trinket ward, except it does damage and has a much lower cooldown. Use it to check brushes against enemy threats. Although Q will be your main wave clear, the AoE from W makes it great nonetheless. However, make sure you have a lot of mana or you're about to base. Look for minions when you're far away that are about to die so you can pick up some golden XP. We'll be using our next ability to increase our chances to land W. His E, Nevermore, throws out a demonic hand, damaging enemies it passes through. Once it reaches its max range, it will then return to Swain, damaging and then rooting the first bunch of enemies it hits. If you've hit enemy champions, you can then recast this ability, pulling enemies towards you and you'll even rip a soul fragment out of them. If there's one ability you want to focus on, this is the most important skill shot to master on Swain. I'll cover the most effective ways in combos. This is your main medium to long range poke tool in lane. Landing this means you can follow up with all your abilities. Once you land E, throw out your W in front of the enemy and recast E to have them closer to the center as possible. This gives enemies the lowest chance to escape before they take damage from W. Landing E and W will give you two fragments. Practice this EW mechanic as much as possible until it becomes muscle memory. Definitely don't want to E pull them out of your W range. Since recasting pulls them closer to Swain, it has great synergy with Q, as they'll now take even more bolts to the face for a possible maximum of 5 bolts. Throw E diagonally in lane, aiming for the max range to catch enemies off guard. 
Most enemies will try to sidestep it. However, if you position yourself on the side of a minion wave and throw it out at an angle instead of straight ahead, it has a great chance to deceive them and they'll not always be able to react to the trajectory. This is another great wave clear tool for Swain. Just make sure you're high on mana or you're about to base. Against spell shielded enemies, for example Sivers W or items like Banshees or Edge of Night, you can cancel them with the initial part of E, but still have the second part, Damage and Root, hit them. And finally, his ultimate has two parts. Demonic Ascension is the first part. Swain will start generating demonic energy, which is the red part under his health bar. During this time, Swain will drain enemies nearby, damaging them and healing himself each second. This ultimate will stay on as long as Swain can generate demonic energy out of enemies. If you have at least one enemy nearby, it will stay on the entire time. Only after two seconds of demonic ascension, he can now cast the next part of his ultimate, Demon Flare. Swain sent out a nova of energy, damaging all enemies in range and slowing them for 1.5 seconds, which decays. Demonic Ascension does amazing AoE, so use it when enemies are bunched up, before or during a teamfight. It can be a great bait tool, having enemies believe they'll finish you off, only to heal up and have them quickly regret their decision. It does heal from minions as well, but only 10% compared to champions. Still, we can use this during an all-in against our matchup for slightly more healing. It works even if you're CC'd or using items like Zonya's. Demon's Flare Slow becomes a great tool to land our other three abilities. I'll go over this in combos. You can hold onto Demon Flare while enemies are still close to you and as they try to escape, then use the active to slow them, forcing them to stay within your Demonic Ascension even longer. As for ability order, you want to max Q first. It's essential to wave clear because of its low cooldown. It will be your main damaging tool during fights as you'll be able to spam Q on a single or multiple enemies. You want to max W second for the increased damage, slow strength, and lower cooldown. You'll max E last as it doesn't lower the cooldown and will be used mostly for utility, so you can land your W and Q. And of course, level ultimate whenever it's up, which is level 6, 11, and 16. As for which to take at level 1, you want E. The long range and AoE is great for early lanes, and you can start healing and picking up soul fragments every time you hit your matchup. If your team decides to invade, it's an amazing tool to catch out one or even more enemies, recasting it to pull the enemy into your team. You want to take W level 2 against ranged champions and Q level 2 against melee champions. When it comes to major runes, there are three top runes to choose from, each with a specific goal. Conqueror and Phase Rush for mid, bot lane carry and top lane, and Electrocute for support. Conqueror is the most popular rune taken. It really synergizes well with Swain's kit with the increase of damage the longer you're in combat, especially as you're able to Q spam and even auto attack from range to activate the maximum Conqueror stacks of 12. Additionally, you've got the great healing from the max stacks, which is amazing on top of his healing passive and ultimate, helping you sustain in those fights where you're surrounded by multiple enemies. Phase Rush is specifically taken to counter fast and mobile champions, helping Swain catch up and position with the burst of movement speed after three separate attacks or abilities. When Swain's able to get into enemies' faces, he can dish out plenty of damage with Q spam. The movement speed also helps him to stick to enemies while he's channeling his ultimate, Demonic Ascension. Electrocute is the final top major rune, specifically taken for bot lane as support. As a support, you'll be efficient in quick fast trades and Electrocute will help you deal extra damage. It's also great for all-ins, anytime you hit an E, W, Q combo. Just for clarity, if you land E and recast it, it counts as two Electrocute procs. As for minor runes with Conqueror, you'll want to take Presence of Mind for the Mana Sustain, which will be especially important during the early game, before you finish your Lost Chapter. Legend Tenacity is the second minor rune, for the resistance to CC enemy abilities that can either stop you from dealing damage and even prevent you from entering fights and stick close to enemies. The final option is Last Stand. When you enter a fight as Swain, you'll usually be surrounded by multiple enemies and therefore have a high chance of taking damage. We'll take advantage of this by gaining some extra damage at low HP. Remember you'll gain plenty of HP while fighting and even items like Zonya's Hourglass will allow you to stay low HP for a long time. Phase Rush minor runes are pretty clear cut choices. Mana Flow Band for the mana sustain, again very important for his early phase. 
Transcendence for some great ability haste and potential to really snowball fights after a level 11 where he'll receive 20% reduced cooldown on enemies for his basic abilities. Your Q spam especially will be insane at this stage. Celerity is also worth considering if you want more movement speed. And finally, take Gathering Storm for one of, if not the best scaling rune. This will really spike at 30 plus minutes. His passive plus this rune will allow you to have a dominating late game. Scorch is a minor rune worth considering if you want more early game pressure while poking. And finally, Electrocute as the final major rune choice, specifically for support. Pick up Cheap Shot, activate it any time you land E, W, or your ultimate. If you're after a bit of sustain against some heavy poke, take Taste of Blood. Eyeball Collection is the default best option for the second minor rune, helping you pick up some extra AP after takedowns, but Zombie Ward and Ghost Poro are just as solid if you want to prioritize vision control. Finally, take Ultimate Hunter to reduce the cooldown of your ultimate. Treasure Hunter is viable if you have an early game champion you are looking to snowball with, for example Draven. As for second page options, the most optimal choice for Conqueror, Phase Rush and Electrocute is from the Resolve Tree. A solid first choice is Conditioning for the flat and 5% bonus armor and MR after 12 minutes. The extra defensive stats will come in handy once you start joining teamfights and skirmishes. You could also take Bone Plating against champs that have bigger burst combos, especially for laning phase. And the last options are quite close. Overgrowth will help you gain even more passive HP. This on top of your passive really adds up late game. And finally revitalize for the increased healing. This can come from multiple sources of Swain, his passive W, E and ultimate, as well as allies that can shield or heal you. Items. Starting items, Dorian's Ring plus two HP pots. The most common start providing your basic needs early lane. Tier of the Goddess. You can start this if you plan on building Seraph's Embrace, which I'll cover soon, but you can still take Thorin's Ring and then pick up Tear on your first or second back. Corrupting Potion. Only get this if you're going for hard trades and can make the most with auto attacks, abusing the burn passives. Some early buys and components. Lost Chapter. Your first main goal in laning phase is to purchase your Lost Chapter. This will solve most of your mana issues early game and help you build into your mythic. Dark Seal. This is a solid quick buy, especially if you have to base with less than 400 gold. Doran's Ring. You can still pick this up if you've got Corrupting Potion first, for example, and you just want a more reliable stopwatch. This might be a game-changing purchase, especially against champ like Zed or in an early team fight. Great if you're building Zonya's Hourglass later on anyway. Boots of Speed. Pick these whenever you have the extra 300 gold or even prioritize it to dodge skill shot champions. Mythics. Leandry's Anguish. This is the most optimal and popular mythic for Swain. The mana, AP power spike, and damage over time supplies him with everything he needs to pop squishies and 1v1 tanky champions. Unfortunately, there's no tanky stats, but we'll make up for it with our legendary items. Rod of Ages. Although this was one time Swain's go-to item, it's not currently strong enough compared to Leandri's. It provides plenty of stats and sustain, as well as some movement speed. I'm keeping this here, as one day it might just be the first choice mythic. I'll update the comments if this happens. Radiant Virtue. This is currently a strong item and can work well with Swain's kit. You'll get a burst of health when you ult, as well as increased healing and ability haste. This is a tanky option if you ever need to be a frontline for your team. Just be aware you'll lack damage early, so make sure your team has plenty of damage covered. Jack Show the Protein. Another tanky item, but this increases your defensive stats while in combat, while dealing AoE damage. Again, you'll have a lot less damage compared to Leandri's, so only take this item if your team desperately needs a frontline or tank. Legendary Items Rylai's Crystal Scepter This has become an amazing second buy after Leandri's. Although Swain has a bunch of CC in his kit, the slow synergizes extremely well with his ultimate with the massive AoE slow. Enemies hit with your other abilities will now have a low to zero chance to escape. Sonya's Hourglass one of the best playmaking as well as safest choices for Swain. This has amazing synergy with his ultimate and healing passive. Anytime you are low and in the middle of multiple enemies, make sure to spam abilities and hit Zonya's Hourglass active for complete safety. You'll deal damage and heal while enemies around you are burning. Demonic Embrace. Another damage over time item on top of Leandri's Anguish. You'll gain 2% of your bonus health as ability power, which synergizes well with most of the following legendaries and you get a nice chunk of HP too. Spear of Visage. 
The HP plus the 25% increased healing will help you become unkillable in teamfights, especially against AP champions with the MR you receive. Rabadon's Death Cap. Are you snowballing game and after a bigger power spike? Pick up the ultimate AP item. Everything now will disintegrate in front of you. Void Staff. Although you deal plenty of HP damage already from Leandri's Anguish and Demonic Embrace, sometimes it's just not enough, especially against MR stacking teams. Pick this up for 45% magic penetration. Morella Nomicon. Necessary item against heavy healing comps, for example, Sorak and Vladimir. If your support has Chemtech Putrefier, you don't need this. Magi Soul Stealer. Not the safest buy on a champ like Swain, who has to get very deep in teamfights, but if you're feeling strong and unkillable, upgrade your Dark Seal. Frozen Heart. Up against the heavy AD comp, pick this to reduce AD and attack speed on nearby enemies. Thornmail, great against AD champs who rely on lifesteal to sustain in fights. Force of Nature, a viable choice against heavy AP comps. Just make sure you have enough damage on your team. Abyssal Mask, another MR-based tanky item that reduces the enemy's MR. Perhaps a better choice than Force of Nature if you have two or more AP-based champs on your team. Some Boots. Mercury Treads are the best against heavy AP and CC enemy comps. You already have some tenacity if you've chosen Conqueror from the Legend Tenacity rune, but this can be purchased on top of it. Plated Steel Caps are the best against heavy AD and attack based champions. Sorcerer's Shoes can be viable if you have champs that can frontline for you and therefore let you do most of your damage from safety. However, you should consider the first two defensive boots options, especially when playing a close up champ like Swain. Ionian Boots. This is a great budget option. The summoner spell haste will be important when you need to have ghost and flash off cooldown, something Swain really relies on in teamfights. Boots of Swiftness. This is an even cheaper option, which can be viable against champs who have a bunch of slows, who have slightly more speed than the other boots. As for shards, attack speed or adaptive as your first. If you're able to get in close for auto attacks, take attack speed, otherwise adaptive is much safer. Keep in mind attack speed helps you slightly activate all three major runes faster. Take Adaptive as your second shard, then either Armor or MR if you're against AD or AP matchups respectively. As for Summoner Spells, Flash is by far the best first choice Summoner Spell on Swain. Combos, Escapes, Outplays, Positioning, Sniping Enemies etc. Don't skip out on this item. The next few are situational. Ghost. Good synergy with Swain's kit, especially his ultimate, as you'll be able to constantly stay close to enemies. This will be necessary against teams that can easily kite you from range. Ignite. Increase your potential to kill your laner with true damage. You'll have a lot more pressure earlier in any skirmishes. Also, healing reduction will be necessary to counter some champions. If you can't see yourself getting kills early on, just take Ghost. Teleport. A much safer rune to help you out in tougher lanes. If you're up against heavy poke or fast pushes, recall TP back to lane to stay even in golden experience. Exhaust. Something to consider against high burst threats, negating most of the damage for 3 seconds. Barrier. A little bit more niche against long range champs you can't exhaust, but also great for baits. Enemies will think they have you killed until you use barrier and start healing up from your passive and ultimate. This also counters ignite. Cleanse. If you're up against heavy CC comps, you'll probably need this. Heal. Take this as a bot lane carry. With someone nearby, you heal yourself and your ally. Pre-6 combos. Main trade combo. E1, W, E2, Q. This is your bread and butter all game long. Master this and you'll be doing optimal damage with your three basic abilities. It might seem easy, but landing E will be the hardest part. Once E has hit the enemy, Place your W in front of them and then recast E to have them pulled as close to the center of W as possible. This will give them the least chance to escape. Follow up with a Q. Some enemies with mobility can dash or blink out of W even if you land E so you have to instantly cast W. Try to get in an auto attack if you're within range. The catch out combo. W then E. Here's a useful combo to catch out enemies from further away. The strategy behind this is to either force enemies to get hit by W first and then when they are slowed, follow up with an easy E. 
However, most players will walk around the W. This opens up an opportunity to now go for an E towards the edge of W enemies have sidestepped. The worst case is the enemy is now forced to walk into you, which you can now use Q or engage with your ultimate. This is best used in tight areas of the map where enemies have little choices to maneuver. A peel off combo. E1, path behind the enemy, then E2. This will be useful to peel off champions, usually melee champs, right on top of you. Once you land E, path behind them and press E again. This will push away enemies from Swain, giving you some distance to escape. All you have to do is press E2 when the enemies are right on top of you. Ultimate combos. Full ultimate combo number one. E, W, R1, E2, Q, auto attack, R2. This combo starts off with landing E, then ultimate. This is important to make sure mobile enemies are locked in while they are taking damage over time from his ultimate. Landing E first could also save you from wasting ultimate. For example, if you miss E against a mobile champ, don't use ultimate and try again later. If you were to use ultimate straight away against a mobile champ, you would spook them and they can simply dash or blink away until your demonic energy bar has run out, pretty much wasting ultimate. By the way, after Demon Flare, you should keep spamming Q and following the enemy for as long as you can, making sure they are taking damage over time. Full ultimate combo number two. R1, Q, auto attack, R2, E, W, E2, Q. Against immobile champs, you can initiate with ultimate so you can have Demon Flare ready quicker. Once they are slow from Demon Flare, it will be much easier to land E. We're also taking advantage of the 20% reduced cooldown of E while Demonic Ascension is activated. Again, keep following the enemy so they're in your Demonic Ascension, spamming abilities whenever they're up. Even if you don't remember these two ultimate combos off by heart, just remember the important reasons behind them. Your goal is to keep enemies as close to you as possible, so they take as much damage from Demonic Ascension as possible, or while spamming your other abilities. With both these combos and depending on your items, you'll have potential to 1v2 or even more enemies. Flash combos. Q, flash, a quick and simple combo to finish off enemies using flash to close distance. Flash E, not exactly an amazing combo, but you should attempt to catch enemies further away, mostly if they are in narrow tight areas and they just simply can't sidestep it. E is a very easy skill shot to dodge for most players, so best use on immobile champs. And just for clarity, E flash does not extend the range of E. Now this is an E flash not used to extend it, but used to change the direction. You'll be using E, then flashing to reposition as the E is returning and catching enemies by surprise. Great for those clutch moments. Massive AOE slow. R flash R2. If you ever want to engage on multiple enemies, use this. Best use when the rest of your team can follow up. Look for opportunities when enemies are bunched up, like around Baron and Dragon Pits, or in areas in the jungle. Quick Burst R1, Flash, R2, Q For a small burst of quick damage from Demon Flare and Q. Best used to finish off enemies using Flash to gap close. The closer you are, the more damage you can get from Q. The combo assumes you already have Demonic Ascension on, perhaps during a teamfight or skirmish, and now that 2 seconds have passed, you see an opportunity to quickly finish off an enemy further away with Demon Flare and Q. One item combo. Zonya's Hourglass. A full ultimate combo or main trade combo, then hit Zonya's. There isn't really an optimal combo, as the Zonya's active is best used whenever you're at risk of dying or being CC'd. The worst case is hitting Zonya's while you're full health and then having enemies run away. The best case is you're about to die, but you're able to unload all your cooldowns, enter the safety of Zonya's stasis, then have enemies burn and die around you, then come out alive. With a full ultimate combo, you'll be healing and damaging enemies nearby while in the Zonya's hour stasis. Early game. Invading with Swain is recommended, and you want to take E. It's quite a slow skill shot, so it's better as a follow-up CC after your teammate has landed theirs. If you end up having a level 1 teamfight, which is like a small 5v5 early game, Q is much better for the AoE damage and low cooldown at such an early level, 
just make sure to auto attack as well during this time. You want to start E for most lanes, for the long range and chance to pick up soul fragments. Start to auto attack minions as, as soon as possible, especially against champs with strong wave clear. You can take Q at level 2 against melee champs or W against ranged. You can look for E W combos. To save mana, only use W if you land E, as well as W also having a big cooldown. At level 3, go for E W Q combos. Look to all in most champs if you land two of these combos. Mana can be an issue if you start spamming E and W without it landing. Most of your mana problems will be over once you finish the lost chapter. Pushing in waves early will help you get to fights into the jungle and river quicker. You'll have priority in those important skirmishes with your jungler. You may want to freeze waves if you want to encourage ganks. Try to chain CC with your jungler. Unless you're confident you'll land E or W, let them use their CC first, then follow up. Once you're level 6, you don't need to push in waves as much and can look to freeze next to your tower. Apart from encouraging jungle ganks when you're next to your tower, it also allows you to deal more damage in all-ins with the greater distance to chase enemies as they're far away from their tower. As already mentioned, the longer you're in a fight, the more damage you can output. Swain doesn't exactly have the best rooms, however, he does have pressure in the river. Ward up and hang around areas other champs might look to roam and catch them out. You can even be on the lookout, whether it's bot or top or in the jungle, to help your team with a long range W or even try to snipe a low HP enemy. Skirmishes or teamfights around objectives like Herald or Dragon are perfect for Swain. There's more chance enemies will be bunched up, allowing you to deal AoE damage. Mid game. This is Swain's time to dominate. You'll usually have 2 to 3 AP items, which is more than enough to burst most squishies and even shred tanks, so be ready to catch enemies out. At this point, you should be looking to make picks with or without your team. A single pick can really open up the game, giving your team the advantage to take objectives. This is also the time where you'll have amazing potential to 1v2, even 1v3, especially if you camp a brush and CC an enemy before they even have time to react. Even if you take out two enemies and get killed, it will hopefully allow for the rest of your team to pick up objectives and farm around the map. Fights around the river, jungle or epic monster pits are great for Swain. There is plenty of brushes and lack of vision to catch players out. Pick up a control ward and swap your trinket to sweeping wards for extra vision denial. Swain has strong sieging and dive potential, especially with items like Zonyas and Spirit Visage. Look to engage, spam all abilities and then spam Zonyas when you are taking damage from enemies in the tower. Side laning is a great option if you're falling behind or you want some extra farm. You should be able to fight most enemies. Swain has greater potential to land abilities and deal more damage when he is being chased. Again, if you can attract two or more enemy players to deal with you, it might open up an opportunity for your team to take a dragon or even baron. Late game. A lot of the mid game still applies to late game with Swain. Most enemy team comps will have healing reduction at this point, so keep this in mind. Again, looking for picks is one of your strengths, as a single pick with W or E can change an entire team fight and ultimately win you the game. Keep an eye on enemies who have flash or any important abilities on cooldown, as you'll have a greater chance to wipe them out early in a fight. Like most control mages, you'll have a much harder time one-shotting squishies as they'll be constantly grouped up and finish their survivability items. Again, fights around barons and elder dragons are great since there's a tight narrow areas and brushes to play around. Anytime you hit an E, look to start a fight and engage. Remember to finish off with void stuff if you're going to have any chance of chunking tanks who stack MR. However, if that's not a problem, you can just focus on more AP items. If your team is lacking a tank, just focus on more defensive items mentioned earlier, like Spirit Visage or Frozen Heart. You want to soak up pressure in some cases so the rest of your carries can output damage safely. Team fighting. Swain excels in team fight with plenty of AoE damage and CC. Chase down enemies, spam your Q, and look to land W and E on fleeing enemies. It's important to stay close enough to enemies so your ultimate is constantly generating demonic energy. However, just jumping straight into 5 enemies will most likely get you killed. This changes when you have your defensive items, especially Zonya's Hourglass. Look to burst or at least chunk enemies before a fight even starts. With one squishy dead, you'll now have a 5v4 advantage. Although not exactly easy to pull off, you want to aim your basic abilities whenever enemies are bunched for the AoE damage. Hitting 3 or more enemies can seriously turn most fights in your favor. 
Swain does a decent job of peeling, especially when you have a fed member on your team and you're slightly behind. Save your W, E and Demon Flare for them. Some fights, you want to simply stay back until you've landed a W or E, as mobile enemies can simply just escape if you engage with your ultimate first. Swain does a solid job at cleaning up and finishing off low HP targets with your W and E. Zoning with your W can also prevent enemy carries from getting close for a few seconds. Simply place them in the tight areas so they are slowed if they walk through or they'll have to just stay out of the fight for the two seconds. If things turn bad quickly in a team fight, for example two of your carries get wiped out, just get out safely. Surviving allows you to wave clear and hopefully give your team a chance to stay in the game and perhaps win the next fight. So you're interested in learning Swain, but aren't sure if he's worth investing time on. Let's first go over strengths, basically reasons you want to play Swain over other champs, then we'll cover weaknesses to consider, and mention some quick solutions. Strengths, massive AoE. With every single ability dealing AoE damage, you'll do plenty of damage whenever enemies are bunched up. This also means he has great wave clear. Snowball potential. If you ever pick up two or more kills early on, you'll now have potential to 1v2 enemies. If they can't finish you off quickly enough, you'll be unkillable as you heal up using your passive and ultimate. Dominates teamfights. Leading on from the massive AoE strength is the ability to dominate teamfights. This is where Swain really shines. The more enemies nearby, the more damage and healing. Naturally tanky. With a passive that heals and permanently stacks HP over time, Along with items that provide HP like Rylai's Crystal Scepter, Demonic Embrace, and even the defensive active from Zonya's Hourglass, you'll become another tank on your team, except you'll be a much bigger threat in terms of damage. Complete items like Spirit Visage, and you'll become unkillable. Solid CC. With CC from three of your abilities, with E technically having two types of CCs, which is a root and a pool, Swain will make picks and lock down enemies throughout the entire game. Weaknesses. Mana issues early on. One of the main issues you'll find early when playing Swain is that you'll go oom um pretty quickly if you spam your abilities. If you're landing them consistently then that's no problem, as you might even pick up a kill. Choose your moments carefully. Wait until enemies are about to last hit a minion before you throw your E. Only go for W if your E lands. Try not to spam Q early on the minion wave, unless it's to finish off maybe two or more minions, or you're going back to base anyway. If you still have mana problems early, check out the rune section for more options. Outranged. Although his W and E have decent range, he still needs to get pretty close to do the most damage from Q. Most mid lane mages will outrange you. Against those long range poke champs, make sure to pick up early boots when possible. Pick up runes for sustain. Even consider teleport as a summoner spell against long range champs as you'll be rarely close enough to use a summoner spell like Ignite. Skillshot Reliant. This is especially true with his E, which is fairly easy to dodge for most champions. There is an interesting quality to note about his E. Landing the root is actually easiest when enemies are the maximum range. Enemies in your face will actually have a much easier time dodging the second part of E, as it has to travel all the way back. Use the E flash combo if you need to reposition. Check out the tips and tricks mentioned earlier, and combos to increase your chance to land these important abilities. Mobile Champs enemies with dash or blinks can prevent you from ever getting close. You'll be forced to go for W or E only when they have used their dash or blink. Items like Crystal Scepter could be useful as the slow will make it easier to land your long cast time abilities. Crow's Reveal. Although only a small issue, his crows will reveal your location anytime you land W from long range as enemies will be able to estimate your whereabouts depending on where the crows travel. This can even get you killed late game if you try to catch enemies in a dangerous area, especially around Baron or Dragon. There's no real solution to this, as it's essentially punishing you for landing a skill shot, but it's important to know it exists. Support. Again, most tips from this guide can be applied to support role, but let's cover specific tips. Pick up the Electrocute Rune and start with Spell Thief's Edge. Poke consistently to proc your Spell Thief's Edge passive until you have 500 stacks to place wards. You'll then want to switch your ward trinket for Sweeping Lens. Pick up a control ward when you can as well. Any of the builds work for support. You can try something like Radiant Virtue with Chemtech Putrefire 
so you give your teammates grievous wounds during teamfights. If not, you can always just purchase Morello Nomicon for your team. Watchful Wardstone is another item worth considering, but only after level 13. All other items from the build section will work. Look to poke enemies with E. Try to synergize with your ADC. If they have slows or hard CC, use it to land an EWQ combo. Use your W to check for enemy jungle ganks in the Tri or River Brush, or use it to see if the enemy bot lane has placed their control wards in the Tri Brush. Your main goal should be to pressure and poke enemies so your ADC can feel safe to walk up and CS. Even just walking back and forth can force enemies to back off yeah. as they'll be anticipating your next E. At level 6, you'll want to initiate with E, then alternate. You should be the front line and let your ADC feel safe. Anytime your ADC is focused, look to use your WE and Demon Flare for peel. Join skirmishes around Dragon and River when possible. Remember with less gold and experience you'll be behind on items in general, unless you snowball lane so your ability to just go in and sustain will be a lot weaker. You can still go in pretty deep during the teamfights, but only after another teammate has engaged. Bot lane. Basically follow the entire guide from builds to gameplay, except now you have a teammate in lane. You'll really dominate lanes with heavy CC champs like Alistar. Just make sure you time your CC after theirs or you'll have the worst case happen where someone like Alistar would headbutt enemies out of your W or E. This is the same with hook champs like Blitzcrank and Thresh. Top lane. Most tips from this guide can be applied, but let's cover specific tips for top lane. Since you'll be up against melee champions, you should look to start Q. Just like mid lane, Conqueror, Phase Rush are optimal runes to choose from. If you want damage and sustain, which is probably best against top laners, take Conqueror. Otherwise, if they're squishy and mobile, for example, a vein top, take Phase Rush for the chase potential. Although, Phase Rush can be effective against some tanks you want to kite and peel. Teleport is best taken as your second summoner spell for the safety it provides to come back to recover from any bad trades or deaths, as well as the global pressure it has. Unleash Teleport after 14 minutes will become critical when it comes to joining fights while you're split pushing. You can even take Ghost TP if you don't feel the need for Flash. Ghost will help with the important goal of staying close to enemies while your ultimate is active. Lanes will be way more punishing and you have close to zero escapes, unless you land W and E to peel enemies away your chances of surviving are close to none. You'll also be a target for dives, early stopwatches or picking up some defensive stats like plated steel caps against heavy AD could help you sustain through a dive. Defensive runes from resolve as your second page is recommended. Look to join skirmishes with your jungler when possible. Try to chain CC with your junglers and as always it's best that they land theirs first as W and E are quite slow and easy to dodge. Take Herald with your jungler when there's an opening. At level 6 you're a much bigger threat and most of the lane vulnerabilities are gone. Even dives are risky for enemy teams. You should only look to teleport to Dragon if the enemy top laner has also teleported down and you are confident you can win the fight. Otherwise, ping your teammates back and just take tower platings. An early Dragon is not worth risking the loss of multiple waves and tower platings. Be on the lookout to use W on enemy junglers and on enemy mid laners. After the rework last season, Swain mid has come back to life and it feels just as strong as he once was. With great scaling and new mechanics on your E and ultimate, in my opinion, this has been a successful rework. Don't be afraid to test your limits with Swain, especially during 1v1s and teamfights, so you can really get a feel for your damage output and his amazing ability to sustain in fights. You'll be surprised how much you can get away with. If you like this guide and want to see more, be sure to subscribe. Any feedback is welcomed whether it's to do with this Swain guide or the guides in general. I'm Zeus, good luck in your ranked games, and I'll see you in the next video.